Okay, so some of you have been wondering how the heck um, to go through and actually do the downgrade from Vista to XP. Um, like I said in the other video I had out there, the only thing you can really do is wipe your system out and reload it with XP. Um, for some of you wondering how the heck do you do this, um, that's what this video is for. So first thing you want to do is go through, back up your my documents, pictures, um, favorites, bookmarks, anything that you want to keep on a computer, put them on an uh, external hard drive. Um, if you did go through and do a upgrade from uh, XP to Vista, um, you should have an option under um, your control panel add remove programs to go through and basically uninstall Vista. Um, to be honest, the best way to do it is still wipe and reload. That way you make sure you get it cleaned out the best way. <clears throat> um, if you have a brand new computer from Dell, HP, whatever, and you just don't like um, XP, I mean, uh, don't like Vista and you want XP on it, you have to have a Vista um, XP license. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to do this. You want to get to the installation. It's going to ask you for a product key, and you're not going to be able to do anything. So make sure you have XP product key and um, uh, actual XP CD so you can go through and do this. Um, go out to your manufacturer's website. If your computer is running and whatnot, um, go out to your manufacturer's website. Get all the drivers for Windows XP or whatever version of Windows you're going to be going to. And... Uh, Make sure you have those downloaded, put those on your external drive as well. Um, that way you have them because once you get this system back up and running, you may not have your network card, you may not have your sound card, you may not have your graphics, um, full graphics capability because it's going to be using just the stuff Windows XP knows about. Um, if possible, use a later version of uh, Windows XP um, to go through and load your system up with. You know, um, like a copy that's got Service Pack 3 already slipstreamed, whatnot. So, so of course, first thing you want to do is um, restart your computer. And I'm running this in a um, virtual machine. Um, this is a copy of a virtual machine I have that is running uh, Vista. But I just made a copy of it so I can show you how to basically wipe it out and reload it. I'm going to go through and skip through a few parts here because I figured you don't want to watch a 45 minute video on just going through and watching a progress bar go across the screen. So, Okay, when your computer comes back up you want to go through and adjust your um, BIOS boot settings. I uh, usually get into the BIOS, you press uh, F2 in this case, um, it was actually, you know, it could be either delete F2, F10, it could be really any option for it there. Um, common ones are delete F2 and F10. F2 is for um, Dell's, F10 for like a HP, a compact, and Dell is pretty much any generic. <clears throat> uh, you want to go through, set it up to be. Um, that your CD-ROM is the first boot option. You'll find an option probably for boot order or something like that. Um, make sure CD drive is the first thing to start up in the boot order. That way you get the little thing I had there that asked, uh, you know, do you want to start up off a CD? You go ahead and press the key. Um, obviously to get that you have to have your Windows XP CD in the drive. Um, as the setup starts to load up, you'll see it's going to ask you for various files, whatnot. I'm not sure if it's gotten to the point yet or not, but it does ask you if you have uh, additional drivers to press F6. If you have like a RAID controller, anything like that, that's where you're going to have to press F6 to install the drivers for your RAID controller. Otherwise, Windows is going to say you don't have a hard drive. Um, it's not going to see the hard drive. Sometimes it does, but very rarely will it actually see it. And you'll have to actually have a, believe it or not, floppy disk drive to get those drivers loaded up. So if you have a RAID controller, um, make sure you have the drivers for it and um, that you made the 
driver discs. By the way, the screen capturing software I'm using is called um, Cam Studio. It's free, open source, works pretty good. First time I've used it to try and capture something in a virtual machine. So, And now you get your um, options for setup. Um, you're not going to be doing a repair, so you just press enter. It's going to go through, examine the hard drive. I have a virtual hard disk here since it's a virtual machine. Um, you agree to your terms and conditions. And now you select the hard drive that you want to go through and do it. Like I said before, the best thing is to go through and just wipe it out, reload it after you've backed up your files. So I'm just going to delete the partition, continue, delete it. What I always do is I go through and I create a partition. See, you specify the size, which is going to be probably everything for you. And then you go through and do the install. If you go ahead and just tell it to install on that, it's going to automatically assign a drive letter. Most of the time it's going to be C, but if you have a card reader in your system, it could be um, you know, something assigned to like I or J or K or some weird letter that's going to tick you off later. Um, for the simplicity's sake here, I did a quick format. Um, if your computer is relatively new, you know, only like a month or so old, do a full format. Um, that's going to test your hard drive out. Uh, make sure that everything in there, you know, sector by sector is working correctly. If it's a bad, you know, piece of information on your hard drive, it's going to mark it as bad. And that way you don't have issues with it in the future. Prevent issues before you have them, that's what I say. So, after this little setup phase here, um, set up formatting phase it's going to start copying the files onto the drive and it's going to automatically restart so uh, oh, there we go this is the phase I was talking about it's going to copy the files and then once it copies all the files it's going to restart so to save you a little bit of time I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim this section And now this is the part where <clears throat> setup's done copying the files. Goes through, says it's going to initialize your XP um, configuration. Basically, it's just putting out their default registry files, um, a couple default driver files, things like that. Updates the registry um, to be dependent on a few things specific, like the type of processor you got, things like that. Um, very, very minor. Um, registry changes there but critical you could wait for the bar to go across the screen there or just press restart um, do not press the key to start from CD once you've already started the installation process it's gonna already be ready to go on the hard drive so it's gonna go through um, there you go your Windows XP professional screen there um, if you're using one that's got um, service pack um, two or three on it, uh, you will not see the version of XP you have. You'll just see that it's Windows XP. Just a little extra fact there for you. And then the Windows installation will actually start up here. Um, it'll go through, it'll copy a couple more files. Um, and then it's going to ask you for your product key. Okay, and once it does that whole copy in process, you get the setup screen. Um, you set your language options, all that. Um, customize your um, <clears throat> XP configuration. And now here you put in your product key, which of course I'm not going to show you. <laughs> After you do that, you put in your password. I'm not going to specify one, but you should put in some kind of administrator password. Um, computer name, you can name it pretty much anything. Specify your time zone, date, time, make sure that's correct. Next. And then it's going to go through, start configuring your network. Um, it's going to load up a few more drivers, um, everything of that sort here. 
Um, that's all going to depend on your installation. Um, you may get asked um, to insert the disk for certain drivers. Um, Windows will go through and say this isn't a recognized device, but it will go through and try and set it up at this installation phase. Some things can be installed at the time. Um, chances are you're not going to be able to install a lot of that stuff. Um, I would recommend hitting um, you know, automatically install, and if it asks for the disk, just hit cancel and take care of it when uh, Windows is finally installed.